Hello, hello. So, continuing into the debugging series, this is the next video into this. And today we'll be talking about what is this allowed debugging and how it impacts during the debugging process of an extension. So for today's video, what I've already done is I have an extension called debugging extension, which is dependent on two extensions. One is called brand, another is called trans uh, transporter. Now these two extensions are surely not my extensions and I'm taking some dependency on it to modify their behavior. But let's quickly have a look on these two extensions before we move forward to see the impact of it. So these two extensions, the brand one, has in the app.json have set allowed debugging to be false. Now, I've said it so many times, I'll reiterate the fact and this is my belief and let me know into the comments if you think in the same way. When you as a partner, as, a, as an individual developer, are building an extension for a customer, you should never change these values to be false. Customer is paying for it and this is a solution that is built for them. If you are an ISV who would like to protect their source code, then utilize these settings to protect your IP as much as you can. You may or may not allow debugging, but that's completely based on how you build your solutions. Now this flag impacts when user tries to debug the process. Now let's quickly read it what it does. Allow the code to be debugged from other extension when this has been published. The default setting is false. The property will only appear to extension that are published in dev scope using VS code if the apply to dev extension property is set to true. So there is another property, but this property will only apply to the extension that are published in dev scope using VS code, which is may not be true. So I'll try to explain it what this means. So in this particular extension, we have set allowed debugging to false. That means you are not allowed to be debugged. In the other extension, the transporter one, we have set allowed debugging to be true. And that means we'll be able to debug the source code of it. Hopefully that's clear. So now let's look at this from our debugging extension and we'll try to debug this. Now for this, today we'll be using the Business Central SaaS environment. I already have these extensions and the related table, the brand table and the transport table already published here. So now let's go back this time. We have the source code. So now let's go back to our source code because this is what we build in. In this, I know I might want to set the context where I want to apply my uh, uh, debugger points. So let's say if I say that on my sales processing code unit, when the sales header is being created and the customer gets validated, I would like to copy some transporter code if that is allowed to be copied from sales header to, uh, to sales header from my customer. And now, because I have the source code, I can define my breakpoint first hand. In the same way, while the lines are being created, I would like to see what's happening there. So I have both the flexibilities here, right? So I go back to my launch.json, try to see that I have already created a profile. And in this case, it is trying to attach to my sandbox in my cloud with the bug 23, which is my environment name. And if it is not clear, let me try to remove this how I created this, right? So let me come here and try to do add configuration. And this time I'm trying to attach this to the cloud sandbox. As I do that, here it is. Here I need to give my sandbox name, which is debug BC 23. So I'll just change it to debug BC 23. 
Okay. Transfer. Let's do that. And I have set all these settings as standard and I'll change this to be my web client, not the web service client. Okay. Let's follow the same process. Debug without publishing and attach me to my cloud sandbox. As I call the attach, it'll check my authentication. If everything looks okay, it'll go and try to connect uh, this debugger environment to the next session of type web client. My debugger uh, box is here. I already have my breakpoint visible here. There's nothing on the call stack, nothing on the watch. Let's go back to my client. And this time, let's try to create a sales order. Oh, okay. I moved a little bit faster, but I should have gone to the sales order. Okay. Let's go to the sales order. Let's try to create a new sales order. And in this case, as I choose my customer, okay, let's say this one. The debugger should trigger because I have some code written there. But it did not trigger because this might not fall that condition. So let me pick another one. Okay. Okay, there's nothing happened. Because I'm the same session, I guess. So I'll have to launch a new session. So that my debugger kind of gets triggered at that point. So, okay and we'll create a new sales order in this particular client the new one that's being loaded here and the steps remain same because i said attach to the next possible one now this is not something that you have to do every time and i'll tell you how you do that other way around okay let's try to create a new one let's try to pick a customer School of Fine Arts. As I hit OK, you will notice that my debugger started calling me that, guys, I have some breakpoint here. And if you would like to see, here it is. So remember, the transporter was not set, the transporter extension was not set to be allowed debugging false. So what I can do is I can move ahead. And in this time, this is taking me to an another extension where this function is written, which is not part of the extension where I'm in. But because this allows me to debug this, I can go in and see that code, that what's happening here. Okay. Sounds fair. The sales header gets it. And we are good from this point. And I can hit continue. So my sales header has been created. And now I need to do for the lines. And this time, when I come to the line section and choose a item, my debugger again gets invoked because I already have a debugger point set on my sales line copy. And this time, it goes down. And this time, it goes to the brand management, something called as add, allow brand to be copied which is similar to this function but because this extension is set to be allowed debugging to be false if i try to go in i'll see nothing the code is being executed but i am not able to see what's being executed and that's what happened when allowed debugging is set to false as soon as the code comes out of that execution, I can continue seeing whatever I'm doing. And now, again to the debug console, if I would like to watch this value, as we were doing last time, if I add this to watch, this becomes a pretty big value because it's pretty long. So what's the route for that? You type it into the debug console and hit enter. And the debug console gives you an access to the longest possible text variable that you can have in a way so that it's more human readable. So for the longer text values or any 
crazy text constants that you have i would highly encourage to use the web console and the beauty is it remembers what you have typed in the past but just by up arrow you can reuse lies that value okay now that's good and i can come out of it and everything will go into the sequence and my sales order will be created now remember we said that the brand extension is said to be non debuggable that the property is set there but now what i'm going to do is i'm going to back to my client going back here and in my transporter page if i'm trying to delete something what i should be doing here is somehow i need to find my symbols to my transporter which will be in here let's go into the where is my transporter uh, okay sales header arc transporter and this is taking reference of it so let me go to a symbol where i can see the transporter management which is on my al explorer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to look for a table here in my transporter module called a table arc transporter and in this i say okay that seems a code on on delete so i would like to get access whenever the delete happens i set a breakpoint here and this is from an object which is not part of my extension i use that based on the symbols that are available in this extension i set that debugger point now i'll try to delete this transporter logically it should stop me there right so let's say yes and stop me great so i'm in the context of transporter and just remember the transporter extension is set to be allowed debuggable so i should be debug be able to debug and see what's the code inside this particular method as i step into i see nothing and it's still happening okay and i got an error message and i have no clue from where this error message came from because i didn't step in okay and again i'll show it to you if that makes sense i'll refresh this i don't know what's the code there but as soon as i hit delete and say yes i got my context and i should be there should be a code here but as i step into i'm not going in there what i'm getting is an error message here now that's the second part of the equation for the isvs that may have written that code in that way that you need to go back to that extension the transporter extension and see how it is written okay as you can see here the function that is being called from this table called can transporter be deleted you see that the developer here decided that this particular method is non debuggable whereas the rest of the code unit or rest of the object is or extension is debuggable a developer can define even a procedure to be non debuggable and if that's the case then just that particular procedure will not be debugged during the debugging process so that's an alternative to disable the whole extension from debugging to only make methods non debuggable which have your ip which you would not like people to see so in that way uh, the allow debugging flag and <clears throat> the non debuggable parameter of a uh, or of a procedure can limit who can debug or who can see the code that is part of that particular object table so you can define what are these code units what are these different methods that are said to be non debuggable and from a debugging context if you see an empty screen or if you cannot navigate to a certain procedure that means 
the original extension developer have decided or have chosen that you are not able to debug that particular procedure or extension so don't get worried up or worked up when you see that there's a blank screen that also happens with the microsoft code in some areas where you're not allowed to be debugged and that's fair in my in my theory because there are certain pieces of code that we would not like others to access so let me know what you learned from this video did you understand how these different flags uh, kind of limit you but then also help you if you are an ip or an isv developer to protect your segment of the code or the whole extension whole extension sound pretty rigid to restrict access to the certain areas of the code so that the other extension who are taking dependency on your extension will not be able to debug your code let me know what you're missing in the next video we are going to talk about uh, snapshot debugging um if we have skipped anything around it just let me know and we'll surely talk about it you know the drill if you like the content hit the like button if you think others in business and community should know about it hit the share button and if you haven't then please do subscribe to the channel that helps us keep working on these videos and coming up with the new videos as soon as possible so till then have a great day and i'll see you soon